You may have heard that some new pictures of space just came out. It's pretty neat, but aren't there already like a million pictures of space? What makes these new pictures so special? And why do those stars look like that? I'm Jonathan, and today we travel billions of light years into the past while we answer some of the web's web questions. Let me start by thanking the NASA social team for everything they did. It was two days worth of activities from the Web First Images event on July 12th to touring Goddard, meeting web scientists and engineers and traveling to Baltimore to tour the Space Telescope Science Institute. We met so many incredible people and heard their stories leading up to and after the launch of the Webb Telescope. Let's get into some of your questions about the James Webb Space Telescope and its images. Don't we already have a giant telescope in space? Yes, the Hubble Space Telescope, for example, launched in 1990. Old man Hubble is now 32 years old and has lasted far longer than expected. Even though Hubble is still taking great pictures, its technology is a bit outdated and limited to what it can tell us about space. It gives us colorful blobs and weird shapes, which have led to countless discoveries and breakthroughs in our understanding of space. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with an upgrade. Right? Why is Webb so far away? While Hubble sits at 547 kilometers in low Earth orbit, Webb is 1.5 million kilometers away at its destination, Lagrange Point 2. Well, what exactly is Lagrange Point 2? To keep it simple, L2 is one of five points around the Sun, Earth, and Moon that keep everything in orbit together like a choreographed ballet. Webb entered stage right, a beautiful ballerina and a huge sun shield in a camera strapped to its head. Okay, that metaphor has gotten away from me a bit. It sits here because it is essentially locked in place by gravity, which will allow the telescope to capture data without worrying about orbiting Earth and having its view blocked. From here, it will be able to not only capture incredible images of deep space, but also allow us to get detailed images of our own neighboring planets. But there's a limit to what it can see within our neighborhood. Since Webb uses very sensitive infrared sensors. How many micro shutters are there? It's about 250,000. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in, in, a, in a piece that is like this big or so. So, the, so what's really clever about NearSpec is that it has those 250,000 doors and you can just open individual ones and you do that in such a way that they just, when, they, when you get a spectrum out in the back end, they don't go on top of each other. It can never look back toward the sun. This is why it has the massive sun shield, which protects all the important sensors and mirrors. So anything behind it will have to be captured with other telescopes. But that's totally okay. It was never meant for that anyway. Let's compare the first image we got from the Webb telescope of SMAX 0723. If you were to put a single grain of sand onto your fingertip and then hold it up about arm's length away, looking into the night sky, this is how many galaxies are in that tiny speck. That's thousands of galaxies that are up to 13.1 billion years old. To help put things into perspective, Hubble had to spend 13 days capturing data that led to this image. Webb, on the other hand, only spent 12.5 hours. Yeah, and look at that. Not only is the detail much better, but we are seeing galaxies we never saw before. The best part, it was completely unexpected. Watch this clip from my visit to the Wavefront Room on July 13th. And it was literally from the guide camera that we first saw that the telescope, and I remember I walked in really early in the morning and I see over their shoulder, I'm like, what is that? And they're like, galaxies. <laughs> so everyone who would come into the flight control room had to walk up the stairs past this door. And so the first thing they would see is whatever we had obtained that ship before. And it was really something. The telescope is more sensitive than we expected it to be and it's sharper and more stable. And in all the simulations we've done for years, we only simulated using a star to align it. So we had one star, you know, in our test bed and in our testing, and here are all these galaxies. So all the engineers are like, where did those galaxies come from? And it's like, and then the astronomers would walk and they're like, oh, I expected that. <laughs> well, thanks for telling us. <laughs> So this is a, like a one minute exposure. Oh, that's it's, a good point. It's buddy. really short. Oh. And yeah. all the hot pick, I mean, you can see we haven't, it's not dithered right. around like we normally yeah. do. Yeah, but those black in. spots are where it just it got too pixels. bright. Yeah. It's literally like a raw image, all that stuff that you see. Exactly. exactly. One of the things that we did in one of our fine phasing images, we just went through and pulled out all of the galaxies that, you know, were in just a snap like that. 
and like without even trying a few minutes, so less than a half an hour, this is equivalent to what Hubble would do in well, that was 20 minutes. Yeah, a day, a couple of days. What's happening in this image? Well, you may notice the prominent arcs in this image due to the intense gravity of this galaxy cluster. The light rays of the distant galaxies behind the cluster are bent, acting as a sort of magnifying glass. The cluster in the center is 4.6 billion years old, and those galaxies peeking from behind are around 13 billion years old. The stars show prominent spikes as they appear brighter at shorter wavelengths. They have this look because of the mirrors on the Webb telescope. Known as diffraction spikes, they come from Webb's hexagonal mirrors. Well, what's with the colors? Webb is an infrared telescope. It can capture wavelengths that are way beyond what our eyes can see and peer through space with such sensitivity, we will see the first stars and galaxies forming after the Big Bang. And because of this, we have to colorize the images to allow us to see what we would otherwise not be able to. Blue galaxies contain stars, but very little dust. The red objects in this field are enshrouded in thick layers of dust. Green galaxies are populated with hydrocarbons and other chemical compounds. Researchers will be able to use data like these to understand how galaxies form, grow, and merge with each other. And in some cases, why they stop forming stars altogether. Why are the images process this way? Well, when you do a long exposure on your consumer camera and it says like noise reduction or something and it takes extra long, it's doing like a dark subtraction, it's flat field dark, so all sorts of ongoing calibration observations that are taken that are applied to the images so that it's not like we're they're being monkeyed with, you're just reducing the noise, the backgrounds, you're removing, you know, any sort of contributions that can be calibrated out. So that what you're left with is only the true signal coming from the universe. So, uh, we have data taken in different filters with the telescope, and the filters have different wavelengths from short wave to long wave. So with Hubble, that's visible light with web, it's all infrared light. And we use the same process of like combining short wave, mid wave, and long wave in color to create the color image. Hubble has a lot of cosmic rays that you have to kind of clean up. And in the case of web, that didn't really exist. Um, there was some background noise. There's like a some like striations uh, across the background that we kind of have to account for. Like bright stars on web actually saturate the detector. So you get this like dark hole in the center of a bright star, right? Yeah. So I worked uh, with PixInsight actually to create a script that goes in and just fills the pixels in with like the value of neighboring pixels. Why did we take pictures of stuff we have already seen before? Probably the best answer for this is that we are able to compare how powerful Webb is to any of our other telescopes. Obviously, we expect it to be better, but just how much better is a great question. And seeing how Hubble captured the Carina Nebula here, and then how Webb captured it here. That's some amazing detail. The infrared cameras were able to see through the cosmic dust to reveal stars we have never seen prior. We are seeing light that is 13 billion years old. What does Earth look like from there? Well, we wouldn't have even existed yet. And I don't mean humans or dinosaurs. No, I mean our planet and our solar system wouldn't have existed. So if we were in one of those galaxies we saw from Webb's deep field image and could look back in our direction, there wouldn't be anything beyond a rough formation of the Milky Way itself. Earth and our solar system is only about 4.5 billion years old, which is about the same as the cluster here. So I guess it's all relative then. How long will it function? Well, thanks to the precise positioning of the Ariane 5 rocket, it will likely last 20 years as it didn't need to use much of its own fuel to reach its final destination. And since it's incredibly fast at capturing data, we will be learning more about space than we ever have in a shorter amount of time. What mysteries will we learn with the Webb telescope? This may be the best part. We don't really know. Just like with Hubble, we will go looking for answers to questions we didn't know to ask. We have only dipped our toes into the pool of knowledge and we can't even see the bottom yet. It's a lot to take in, but the possibilities for learning are endless. Now that we know Webb's capability, different teams of scientists and researchers will take turns peering through the distant telescope to better understand the life cycle of stars, the early universe, and even atmospheres of extremely far planets. So did I answer your questions about the James Webb Space Telescope? If not, let me know in the comments what you would like to know. Keep an eye out for more Webb pictures to come in the future and to see the new discoveries that Webb will share with us. 
Oh, and they dumped 40 terabytes of raw data already. Not colorized images, but that means anyone can download the data and get to work themselves. And be sure to check out this video here to get a better understanding of just how many stars and galaxies are in the observable universe. As always, thanks for watching and what did you learn today?